once in a while a story comes along that touches your heart and leaves you with a smile on your face. For millions of people, this is one of those stories. In late 2007, this video was posted on YouTube and became an international sensation. A lion cub named Christian, purchased from a London department store in 1969 by two friends who raised him until he grew too big for the city. Against the odds, he was introduced and integrated into the African wild. A year after they parted ways, Christian's original owners, Ace Burke and John Rendell, traveled to Africa to see their former pet. Unsure of what to expect, this is the greeting they received. Rendell say their deep connection with the lion they raised gave their lives a sense of purpose that they hadn't previously felt. One year after the now famous reunion, the men returned to Africa for a second visit. The results were equally as touching. Christian was larger and more self-assured, but he was no less loving with the men who worked tirelessly to give him the best life they could. This would be the last time Burke and Rendell would see Christian, but the inspiring story of this unlikely bond lives on today. And we are pleased to have Ace Burke and John Rendell with us. They have written a book, a book, a lion called Christian, the true story of the remarkable bond between two friends and a lion, as well as a children's version, Christian the Lion. Guys, good morning to both morning. of you. Good this morning. This is actually, this book first came out in 1970, after you had released Christian back into the wild, but before you had a chance to see him again. Yes. But because of all the uh, sensation, or the YouTube mm -hmm. sensation, really, and the interest, you've re-released the book and added chapters about seeing... We've you, updated the 1971 updated. reunion and the 1972 one. You've had time now to reflect since the YouTube video came out and, and was such a sensation as I said. What, what do you think it is about this line and that moment that has so moved people? There are so many issues that have arisen out of it. One I think is that people appreciate, um, can appreciate the love that an animal can have for human beings. It's a completely honest, you could not, you, you couldn't fake that. Although a lot of people, when they saw it, there were the naysayers that that had to be staged. Yes. There's no way that was possible. No, that was actually his, his genuine reaction. You could see the excitement. Were you guys surprised in that moment that, that the lion responded to you the way that he did? You hadn't seen him for a year. Yeah, yeah. We knew he'd know us and would still love us the way we loved him. But we were surprised at how exuberant the greeting was and George Adamson was surprised as well. Yes, George Addison, Adamson really was the man that helped get him back into the wild to mm. reintroduce him to the well, wild. Well that's where we were so lucky having had the introduction yeah. to George that Christian had the guru of lions to help rehabilitate him. We were incredibly lucky. And that's what's good about the YouTube. It has brought people like George Adamson to another generation that weren't really aware that he did rehabilitate Elsa and that these relationships are possible not that we encourage people to get a lion. No, and actually when no. you got your lion in 1969, that was before the Endangered Species Act. I mean, Correct. you got it at Harrods, you bought it at Harrods. That exactly. would never happen today. No, but looking no. back on those moments with that lion and that time in London, mm. what's your fondest memory? Well, I, I, loved, I loved the garden where we took him every afternoon because he was very safe there and he could entirely relax as well. So that was mm. nearly my favorite memory of each day. And also, in a way, it wasn't quite ex so extraordinary that one should have a lion in London. It, all kinds of extraordinary things were happening at that time. Swinging London, there was music, you know, we'd see the, you know, the Stones and the Beatles driving up and down the King's Road. There so a lion in a car wasn't such a big no, deal. Yeah, no, just yeah. a couple of Aussies with a lion. But you always knew that he belonged back in the wild. That was always going to be your mission, and you did reintroduce him. That second time you saw him, this is the video, that we're seeing for the first time yes. today. Now that's, he's twice the size. Oh, were yes. you a little scared of him that second time? No, but we had a lot of respect for him. We got another very excited uh, greeting from him, but he didn't come in for three days. But he came in at night, so he totally disrupted dinner and he sat on you he and knocked, knocked George <laughs> up, uh, jumped on the table. But that wasn't filmed. 
Um, but you never got the sense now he is truly a wild animal? No, but we were very respectful yeah. and he dictated the relationship totally. At that point? Yeah. Yes. He never saw him again after that and, and he basically disappeared. No, well, George, George saw him for the next few months, but the, the visits were getting rarer and rarer and eventually he, uh, he moved, we think he moved north up into the Meru National Park where there was more game because the wild lions were in Cora where George was rehabilitating him were very aggressive, there wasn't much game there. So you're hopeful that poachers didn't get him? Well we don't yeah. think they did because yeah. um, such a huge lion and George thought he was possibly the largest lion in Kenya, if he had been poached someone would have... Been bragging about yeah, it. Exactly. Pushed exactly. And Aston, what is the, the word that you want to get out? What is your mission in writing this book? That Bigger than just telling yeah. the story of Christian? Well, well I think wildlife we, conservation yes. in general and keeping the work of George Adamson and Christian's legacy alive. And today, the George, George, yes, and the, today the George Adamson Trust is still working on rehabilitating parts of, of Africa, Mikamazi in Tanzania, and um, involved with the education of children, schools, we've built schools around the reserve, because this is the future. Yeah, we, we should point out there are far fewer lines now than there were when you purchased Christian yeah, in 1960. Two-thirds less. Two-thirds less. Yeah, which is a frightening statistic, yeah. and in fact it also ties in with a concern about global warming, yeah. in fact. Well, Ace, wildlife yeah. conservation. Ace yeah. and John, thank you so much. I still cry when I see the video. It's quite something. It's nice to be in the studio rather than freezing it's, on that roof yeah. in Sydney when we exactly. spoke before. Lovely to have you both here. Lovely Best be of here. luck with the book. Thank it's called A Lion Called Christian. Ace Burke, John Rendell. Thanks again. Thank and coming up tomorrow, we'll meet a man who cools